Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today we're going to look at logarithms and exponentials. Logarithms and exponentials, that's really hard to say, are the exact opposite of each other. And when you first see them, they might look a little bit confusing because they're unfamiliar. But actually, with a little bit of practice, they're not too bad and the questions aren't too hard. I think the most important thing is being comfortable to be able to switch between logarithm and exponential form. So we'll practice doing that at the beginning of this. Then we'll move on to looking at logarithm equations. We'll do six of those and they're what most commonly come up in exams. We'll also look at solving exponential equations quite quickly and at the end I'll show the MEI students what they have to do for the log graphs. I hope this is helpful. As ever, please do grab a piece of paper and a pen, pause the video and have a go alongside and come back and compare. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with practicing changing this exponential here into a log form. So if we write that as a log, we actually start with the base number two. That becomes the base of the log and we're doing it of eight and we get three. So do get comfortable with the fact that a log is just another way of expressing an exponential power. It's just writing it in a different order and it would be great if you could know where to put those numbers. So if we're starting over here, two to the power of three equals eight, you start with the base, hop over and come back, two to the three equals eight. Practice that a few times. Now I'm gonna give you a log and we'll go back into the power form. If we were going to write this one as a power, start with the base, hop over and come back, two to the power of four equals 16. In the same way, I'm now going to write some with x in and I want you to find x. If you're happy and comfortable at this point to pause the video, please do. So for these ones, I'm going to rewrite them again in the power form and then we can find x. So starting with the base, 3 to the power of 3 equals x. And then it's obvious what x is. That's 27. For the next one, 5 to the x equals 25. Writing it like that, it's obvious now that x is 2. And for this one here, x to the 2 equals 100. So x has to be 10. I'm going to give you three more of those now, so please do pause the video and have a go yourself. Okay, do keep practicing those if you're not quite there yet, but if you're comfortable, we get, that's going to come in really handy when we solve equations. Next, we're going to take a look at the log rules. So here are the log rules. The first one is log of something of itself. What will that give us? If we think about what that means with what we did previously, something to the power of what gives itself? Well, anything to the power of one will be itself. So that log is always going to be one, no matter what this number is here, log three of three, log five of five, always one. Similarly, whatever to the power of something gives you one, well, that power has to be zero. Anything to the power of zero is always one. So this is, one, is zero. If you have log of two things multiplying together to split that into separate logs, it's actually adding. And if you wanted to prove that to yourself, you could put in some numbers and prove that. And dividing is taking away. Now, you might be in the position that you're given these and you want to turn them into those or the other way around. But get familiar with those rules. You're not given these rules, by the way. You do need to know them off by heart. And the last one is this power here can actually be brought down to the front. So if you don't have those rules yet, please do take a note of them and learn them. Next, we're going to look at solving logarithmic equations using these rules. When you're given a log equation, it's really just, there's not that many things you can do to it. It's just using the log, the log rules. So already here, I can see we've got um, a number at the front, which we can raise as a power. Also, if they're adding, to put them into one single log, that will be timesing. 
So we've used two log rules there. At this point, it's back to the stuff we did at the beginning of the video. We can rewrite this as an exponential relationship. So starting with the 4 to the power of the 1 equals 8x. 4 to the power of 1 is just 4, so 8 has, x has to be a half. Do pause the video and have a go at this one in a similar way using the log rules. Okay, that one was a little bit trickier at the end, just rearranging the algebra. The easiest way of doing it is getting all those numbers on one side and square rooting, but you must remember the plus and minus when you square root. Well done if you got that one right. This one's a teeny bit different because we've got logs on, all, on both sides of the equation, but actually it turns out to be even easier. Have a go, get started on your own with the log rules and see if you can figure out what to do. Just as a side note, some, I think in another place I put brackets around this. You don't need them. Sometimes you have them, sometimes you don't. It doesn't make any difference. So at this point, because we've got a single log on both sides, what you can do is just say, okay, well, 9x must equal 36. So you're actually just dropping the log on both sides. You can't do that if you've got plus something else. You, it must be single logs on both sides so you can directly compare them. So 9x equals 36, then obviously x is just 4. Please do pause and have a go at this one. Okay, well done if you got that one right. Now this one's different because the x is actually the base that we're trying to find. Again, it's just done in the same way and actually it turns out to be not too difficult. Have a go. So if you got to this point in the same way as the other ones and then it's rewriting again, x squared equals 36. Again, don't forget the plus and minus when you square root. I put this one in at the end for good measure because it's got a minus in the middle and that's the only log rule we haven't practiced yet. So remember when you minus a, when you put it into the same log, it's dividing this time. So do have a go at this one. Well done if you got that one. These powers were a little bit harder than the previous one, so do remember to um, do a fourth root of 81 and then cube it to get 27, and this is a square root of 64 to get 8. You divide it because it's a minus. If you tried at this point to turn that into a mixed number or a decimal, that would be harder. Um, if you just leave it as 27 over 8, then when you cube root it, it's easier to cube root 27 is 3 and cube root 8 to give you 2. So well done, those are all the log equations we're going to look at. There's plenty of those in past papers, so do have a look at past paper questions, but these are all really likely to come up, any of these that we've done. The only other thing we need to do is look at how to solve an exponential equation by taking logs. Okay, these are actually easy peasy, so we're not going to do many, I've just got two here. Um, there's a few different ways of doing these depending on what calculator buttons you've got. Some people have got a button where they can put in whatever base they want off the log and then these are super easy. 
Um, but I'm going to show you the way that if you've only got just a general log button. If you didn't know, the LOG log button on a calculator, that's base 10. So if we take log of both sides of the equation now, if you don't specify what your base is, then we'll just assume it's 10. People, that's a convention to assume it's 10. And that's what you put on the calculator. So do remember that log is the opposite to exponential, so that's why we're taking logs of both sides of this equation. Now, that power we can bring to the front. And just a simple rearranging. You can then type that into your calculator and get a proper answer, round it to however many decimal places they say in the question. Let's just do the second one quickly. Brilliant. Well, if you're doing an MEI OCR exam, I'm just going to show you one more thing. Um, if you're doing a different exam board, that's probably all you need to do. So, so I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you on another video. If you're doing MEI, stick with me and we'll take a quick look at the graph questions. Okay, so hi MEI students. In your exam, you've got to do something a little bit more. And in section B of core 2, you might get a question where you get a data table that's got an exponential relationship. These questions can be worth a ton of marks, um, so it's really worth getting them right. The first few parts of the question would be all about showing that by taking logs of this equation, you can actually draw a straight line graph. Now at the moment, as it stands, if you plotted these values, you wouldn't get a straight line, you get a curve. But if you take logs of this, you should get a straight line kind of graph. Let's have a go and see what happens. So there I took logs of both sides and I split the multipli I split the multiplication up with an add and took the power down to the front. Now this actually does look something like a y equals mx plus c graph. If we have a look, that would be our y. So instead on the vertical axis, instead of y values, we'll be plotting log y values. And here's the mx plus c bit. So if we plot log x instead of x, that's our what used to be x, that means that b is the gradient and log a is the y-intercept for your y equals mx plus c. So what you would need to do in this question is find log x and log y values, work them all out and plot them. So once you work out your log x values and log y values, Plot them on a graph and you should get basically a straight line. So I'm not saying this accurately, obviously, because it's really hard to do on the whiteboard. But you need to practice a few of these really, really accurately. You need to get a ruler, graph paper and do it with a fine pencil. Plot them as accurately as you can, even to two decimal places. And then the hard bit is drawing the line of best fit. You need to draw that line as accurately as you possibly can. Because if it's just tilted, you know, a half a degree wrong, then you might get your answers wrong. They're really, really pernickety about the accuracy on these questions. Once you've done that, your y-intercept you can read off from the graph and you'll be able to work out a gradient. So hopefully you know how to work out gradient, just plot, pick two points, find out the difference between them, difference in y over difference in x. So let's say that, for example, you get your gradient is 0 0.7, then directly you can see, ah, the gradient is b. So if the question is asking for you to find the values of a and b, this is how to do it. Your b will be 0 0.7. Uh, the Intercept might be a bit more work, so if you get, let's say, 1.1, that's actually log a, so log a is 1.1, 1 .1.
and you'll then need to actually unlog that. So whatever base you've taken here, it might be three, you know, they'll, they'll tell you what base they want. So then you can just do three to the power of 1.1 .1 equals A. And you can work that out on the calculator. Please do have a go at some of these questions. They'll make more sense when you actually work through them yourself. If you've not done one before, then find one and get a mark scheme and work through the two together. But the biggest thing, as I mentioned, is being accurate on these questions. So all the best with that. Keep practicing. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoy.